Hi guys, so good afternoon and welcome back to my magical world. It's me, Frostbite, your favorite celebrity here in the Philippines. And it currently, it's 3.23 in the afternoon right now. Today is September 8th, Sunday. So, happy birthday, Mama Mary. So, ayan. Um, I've already checked, like really checked the previous videos. And unfortunately, we missed two pages so that was that's a one blog so i, I, I recheck kasi everything kasi <laughs> hindi siya nagtatali sa aking recorded numbers so yeah so i don't know if i'm still going to read it for you but now we are we need to proceed uh to page 33 and 34 of the book mastery okay so um, nag film na ako previously but so I already filmed previously but I uh, erased it kasi hindi siya in accordance with the consec you know with the flow with the consecutive flow of this book so I'm not really sure if I'm going to post again another video so pinag-iisipan ko pa siya kung i-film ko ulit yung uh, page may na -miss out, yung missed out na page dalawa lang naman yun so, by now, um, basahin na natin yung page 33 and 34. So, listen up. Hindi ko, sana maayos ko na yung posting kasi <laughs> medyo busy lately. Actually, busy naman lagi. I'm just trying to make time for many things. Okay? So, sa ngayon guys, focus muna kayo sa akin. Okay? So, what particularly, what, blah. So what particularly intrigued him were experiments on optical illusions and blind spots, anomalies in the visual system that could explain something about how the brain itself functioned. Stimulated by this book, he, conduct, he conducted his own experiments, the results of which he managed to get published in a prestigious journal, which in turn led to an invitation to study visual neuroscience in the graduate department of Cambridge University. Excited by this chance to pursue something more suited to his interest, Rakamandran accepted the invitation. After a few months of Cambridge, however, he realized that he did not fit in this environment. In his boyhood dreams, science was a great romantic adventure, an almost religious-like quest for the truth. But at Cambridge, for the students and faculty, it seemed to be more like a job you put in your hours you contributed some small piece to a statistical analysis and that was that he soldiered on finding his own interest within the department and completed his degree a few years later he was hired as an assistant professor in visual psychology of the university of california at san diego as had happened so many times before after a few study after a few years of his mind began to drift to yet another subject this time to the study of the brain itself he became intrigued by the phenomenon of phantom limbs people who have had an arm or leg amputated and yet still feel a paralyzing pain in the missing limb he proceeded to conduct experiments on phantom limb, limb subjects these experiments led to some exciting discoveries about the brain itself as well as a novel way to relieve such patients of their pain Suddenly, the feeling of not fitting in, of restlessness was gone. Studying anomalous neuro bleh, neurological disorders would be the subject, subject to which he could devote the rest of his life. It happened up questions that fascinated him about the evolution of consciousness, the origin of language, and so on. It was as if he had come full circle to the days of collecting the rarest form of seashells. This was a niche he had all to himself, one he could command for years to come, but corresponded to his deepest inclinations and would serve best the cause of scientific advancement. So for letter B, para na to, no? No to, exam. So for letter B, for Yoka Matsuka, childhood was a period of confusion and blur. Growing up in Japan in the 1970s, everything seemed laid out for her in advance. 
the school system would funnel her into a field that was appropriate for her girls and possibility and the possibilities were rather narrow her parents believing in the importance of sports in her development pushed her into con competitive swimming at a very early age they also take her up uh they also had to, had her take up the piano for another japan for an, for other children in japan it may have seemed comforting to have their lives directed in such a fashion but for yuki it was painful she was interested in all kinds of subjects particularly math and science she liked sports but not swimming she had no idea that she wanted to become or what she wanted to become or how she could possibly fit into such a uh, regimented world so yan medyo magulo pala yung hair ko but kung niyo napansin din kasi tinatamad ako ng ayusin guys <laughs> i have many things to do because it's sunday um i film ko lang to just because I wasn't here for many days na, okay? So, ayan. Uh, at the age of 11, she finally asserted herself. She had had enough of swimming and wanted to take up tennis. Her parents agreed to her wishes. Being intensely competitive, she had great dreams for herself as a tennis player, but she was starting out in the sport rather late in life. To make up for lost time, she would have to undergo an almost impossible rigorous practice schedule. She traveled outside Tokyo for training and so would do her homework on the ride back at night, often having to stand up in the crowded car. Ang ingay. Wait lang guys. So, cut muna natin. Hindi ko alam paano natin ito tatapusin kasi it's loud. Yung pasaway na kapitbahay. Ayan na. Na-stop na. <laughs> Tuloy muna natin. Ano, mag, ano na lang kayo. Adapt na lang kayo guys sa... Uh, uh, background noise she would crack open her math and physics books and work out the equations she loved solving solving puzzles and in doing the homework her mind would become completely absorbed in the problems that she was barely aware of the time passing in a strange way it was similar to the sensation she felt on the tennis court a deep focus where nothing could distract her in a few free moments it, on the train yuki would think about her future science and sports were the two great interests in her life in them she could express all of the different sides of her character her love of competing working with her hands moving gracefully analyzing and solving problems Adit lang ulit guys pagpatuloy na tenten guys kasi wala na tayong choice kailangan natin tumatapos so whatever she chose would require sacrificing her other interests which depressed her to no end. One day, she daydreamed about inventing a robot that could play tennis with her. Inventing and playing a game such a robot would satisfy. Would satisfy all of the different sides of her character but it was only a dream. Although she had ris risen through the ranks to become one of the top tennis prospects in Japan, she quickly realized that this was not to be her future in practice no one could beat her but in competition she would often freeze up overthink the situation and lose to inferior players she also suffered some debilitating injuries she would have to focus on academics and not in on sports after attending a tennis academy in florida she convinced her parents to let her stay in the states and apply to the university of california at berkeley so Ah, kasi ba talaga guys yung pag overthink so iwas-iwasan natin yun lahat, lahat tayo at Berkeley she could not decide on a major not on a major, nothing seemed to quite fit her wide ranging interest, for lack of anything better, she, she settled on electrical engineering one day she confided she confided to a professor in her department about her youthful dream to build a robot to play tennis with her much to her surprise, the, pro the professor did not laugh, but instead invent invited her to join the graduate club for robotics. Her work there showed so much promise that she was later admitted to graduate school at MIT, where she joined the Artificial Intelligence Lab of Robotics pioneer Rodney Brooks. They were developing a robot with artificial intelligence and Matsuka, 
volunteer to design the hand and arms. So, yan. Tapos na natin, guys, yung supposed to be uh, finished. Ay, yung, yung task natin today. <laughs> so, thank you guys for listening and thank you for helping me make this world a better place for all of us and for the future gener generation. Um, I will see you again. And uh, keep up lang kayo for watching my videos, okay? Subscribe kasi that's the only way. That's the only thing that uh, will help us each other. <laughs> wherever you are in the world. So, ayan. Ayusin ko to. Kung ayusin ko yung ano ko. Hindi ko pa siya kasi naayos the way I wanted it exactly. Yung channel ko. But, hopefully, someone could help me out with this. Ayan. Sa aking good friends out there. Which is so busy din. Pati din naman ako. I can't, ano, right now, hindi pa nag-aakma yung oras. And yung, ano, uh, schedules. But, yeah, um, if you are my friend from afar, Shabra, I just want all your happiness. So, yeah, I'm just here to support, even though in the dark, diba? Hindi ko naman kasi mostly nakakausap yung mga, yung mga friends ko, and I don't know if they are watching my channel. So, if you are watching my channel, so yeah, I want to thank you for many things, okay? Now, I have really good, good friends out there, mostly yung iba na sa Malayo. Anyways, bye guys.